Hello, and welcome to our latest Money Show Money Masters podcast segment. I'm Mike Larson, Editor-in-Chief at Money Show, and today I'm speaking with Danielle Shea, Vice President of Options at Simpler Trading. Thanks for taking some time out to talk, Danielle. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to being on your show. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's start by talking a little bit about Simpler Trading. Why don't you tell our listeners what it is that your firm does and what your role is there? So I am the VP of Options at Simpler Trading, and what we do over here is we teach people how to trade with their own money. So we have a team of traders that were all brought together by our founder, John Carter. He's the author of Mastering the Trade, and it's our mission in life to trade our live accounts in front of others so that they can learn the good and the bad, right? So we have trading rooms, I have a free newsletter, social media, YouTube. And I'm just sharing what I'm doing with my own trading for anyone who would like to learn and listen. Awesome. Awesome, Danielle. All right. Well, why don't you walk me and our listeners through your methodology first? I mean, what are the kinds of indicators that you pay the most attention to? And just talk about that a little bit to start things off. Yes, of course. So I'm a directional swing trader. And so what I strive to do more than anything is identify relative strength and weakness in the market because I want to be able to jump on those trends. So as an options trader, you really need to be able to to identify when a stock is going to be making a greater than expected move. And so I like to use the squeeze. This is the primary tool that we use over here. Um, This is a consolidation breakout signal. So I will use that in my directional trading, um, you know, trying to get in at point A and getting in, getting out at point B. And then I also trade a lot of earnings reports as well. Okay, gotcha. Now you had one of your commentaries and and there's some great content there. So please people check it out at fivestartrading.com. And you wrote that so much of successful trading is about preparation and preparation comes in the form of education, practice, watch lists, research, and more. Hope I didn't butcher that quote. Um, Can you talk a little bit about that and, and what kind of prep work you do just to be more successful in this market? Yes, of course. So at fivestartrader.com, my newsletter subscribers are going to get a variety of different things, including setups that I pick out in the market. Now, when you're looking for setups, you really need to spend a lot of time doing some preparation because what often happens is traders are sitting back and saying, oh my gosh, why is the stock moving 5% today? What we always strive to do is get in before that happens. And so I'm constantly scanning the market, looking for nice pullbacks, consolidation zones where I can get in before those moves happen. So I'm looking for squeezes um, on relative strength winning stocks when I want to trade to the upside. And I'm looking for the same thing on losers that I want to short to the downside. I also spend a pretty considerable amount of time uh, paying attention to earnings calendars and looking for what kinds of stocks I can trade uh, surrounding earnings season. Got it. Perfect. Now, in this market environment, I mean, what kinds of options market strategies are look particularly attractive to you? And is there anything that really isn't working right here? So there's two different things that I've been doing, um, you know, surrounding earnings season, especially in a low VIX environment like we've been in. I've actually gotten more into buying calls again. Um, you know, that's something that I really haven't been doing over the course of the last year and a half because we've seen a lot of volatility. So I've been using a lot of uh, multi leg spreads. I use a lot of put credit spreads. I use a lot of butterflies. But now that the VIX is so low, those options premiums are cheaper. So I have been uh, buying long calls to ride trends. Um, additionally, even though the VIX is lower and we're seeing, you know, prices cheaper on those options than they have been over the course last year and a half, we still see a rise going into earnings and then a fall afterwards. So I still like to sell premium over earnings reports. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You know, that was actually the next question you must have read my mind. I was going to ask you about some of the things uh, that you advise investors and traders do around earnings. I know you've talked a lot about Microsoft and AMD and some of the other big names, and and you talked about the pros and cons of selling premium around earnings. Did you want to go into that a little more detail? Yes, definitely. So, you know, I find that when people get into the options market, they primarily start by buying calls and buying puts, right? Um, But one of the best aspects of trading options is the ability to come in and sell premium when you know that there's going to be a specific event. So surrounding earnings season, we know that the premium in options goes up into earnings and it goes down afterwards. So 
I do really enjoy taking part in that strategy. Um, it's something that, you know, you can find on a calendar, just paying attention to which tickers you want to use quarter over quarter. So um, that's something that I've been talking to my subscribers about quite a bit uh, recently. Okay. Now I know you've had, you've shared some of your content, some of your videos on YouTube and on Twitter and so on. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the earnings type uh, pattern that you've seen with a lot of these big tech names, these big popular companies, have we seen them tend to hold on to their earnings, their pre-earnings gains? Are they giving it back? Is, is bad news being treated as good news? I'm just kind of curious what sort of trends you've seen there. So what we've seen this quarter is that companies that are beating their EPS estimates and everyone was very bullish about them, very excited about them because they've had great moves this year. We're seeing those fall. I mean, today we even have AMD falling quite a bit. Um, and that's been pretty typical of this quarter. Now, there have been some outliers where we have companies that, you know, come out and really had bigger than expected moves, where you had Google and Meta have some very nice gaps higher. But for the most part, I think that those moves have been because they're much greater than expected. Companies that are reporting what people expect, you know, it's not really, it's not bad, it's just, not amazing yeah. it's not exciting it's not new uh we're seeing those companies sell off Got it. and do you think that says anything about the broader market i mean if we step back and kind of look at things from thirty thousand feet up i mean is it just a case of us having run too far too fast do you think we need a breather i mean you know what are you seeing there uh certainly we have run too far too fast i mean it's been just this amazing trending market really ever since the lows at the end of last year and so I mean, it makes sense that we need a little bit of a reset after the run that we've had. And, you know, for so long, we were in this situation with earnings season where we were expected to see this just amazing growth and we could continue following those trends post earnings. And then when things got a little bit better at the end of last year, it was surprising, right? It was like, oh my gosh, earnings aren't terrible. This is great. Let's buy them. But now that excitement has kind of waned. And so I think we're just looking for a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a stagnation. But I mean, earnings have not been bad. So I'm not concerned about the overall long term investing take here. Got it. And yeah, you know, that brings another question to mind. And that's, you know, earlier this year, we kind of had this all tech, all the time market, right? I mean, everything else, that was where all the focus was. That was where all the gains are. We've seen things like small caps and energy and financials and some of those other sectors catch up. Is there anything that's catching your eye there? I mean, are there, are there some earnings plays? maybe in those kinds of left for behind sectors? Certainly. So when you look at energy stocks in particular, um, you know, I really think that those are starting to come back right now. And as we look for tech to pull back, um, generally, I'm going to want to look for some sector rotation and see what space in the market I can start to get into, right? So I am eyeing energy. Um, I'm eyeing consumer staples a bit, though. Those are a little bit dicey just because, you know, we have some of them that have done really well on earnings. And then we have some of them like Hershey's, for example, did well on earnings, but it's kind of topped out. So you really have to pick and choose. You know, my primary thing right here now is I want to identify pullback zones in the NASDAQ and I want to be able to jump on some of these tickers that have pulled back after earnings. You know, you have Microsoft, you have Netflix, you have Tesla, AMD now. Um, if these stocks can pull back, find a nice consolidation zone, that may be a really good entry back to the upside along with this trend. So that's the number one thing I'm looking for right now. Got it. Um, you know, we're getting towards the end of our time, but I did want to ask something here. I mean, it's the big news this this week when we're as we're talking about this Fitch downgrade. And it's one of these sort of like black swan or out of, out of left field type things that happens in the market. How do you trade for that? How, how do you prepare for that? Or, or what can you do, um, you know, as an options trader to just kind of keep things like this in the back of your mind? So, you know, people ask me all the time if I stay regularly hedged. I do not stay regularly hedged for events like this because if you're always hedged, I mean, you're, you know, ideally your your bullish trades or the main trades you're working, right, are going to be working and then your hedge is losing money. So it's kind of like a, you know, if you if you take all that money you wasted hedging <laughs> at the end of the year, it's much better to not have done that in my experience. So what I typically do when we start to see the market pull back is I start trading the cues to the downside. So 
Um, I'll use some debit spreads, I'll use some butterflies, and you know, I will look at the current positions that I have on, see if I still wanna hold them, see if I got stopped out. But primarily what I'll do is I'll just add some downside trades to capture that downside move. Got it, got it. Well, you're gonna be speaking with uh, for us at the Orlando Money Show at the end of October, can't wait for that. So I was just wondering, we're still a few months out. Are there any uh, things, you, maybe a sneak peek you could give as far as what you're gonna talk about or some points that you wanna share? Certainly. So when you look forward to that event, that's going to be at the end of October, you know, this is going to be right in the middle of earnings season. It's going to be an incredibly volatile time. You know, generally when you have Microsoft, Apple, Google, Meta, all reporting earnings right around that same time, specifically in that quarter, it always tends to be September, October, where the market gets very volatile and we can often see a pullback. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how the market ends up reacting post earnings this quarter because I'm anticipating a bit of a pullback in September and October. So I think that there's gonna be a lot of volatility. I think there's gonna be a lot of good trading because whenever you have volatility, that (laughs) brings about a lot of trading opportunities. So I'm looking forward to Uh, speaking to all the members about that there. Absolutely. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for your time and thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, I do encourage you to check out uh, information about the Money Show Traders Expo in Orlando. We're scheduled for October 29th to 31st at the Omni Orlando Resort at Champions Gate. If you're into golf, it's one of the best golf resorts in Florida. If you're not, that's fine too. We've got three full days of keynotes, panels, networking receptions, and all that. Uh, The link in, in the video description below will give you some more information. And Danielle, thanks again so much for your time. Thank you.